faces, the curves of eyes and lines creasing around the mouth or layered up across foreheads, turbans or mops of hair and the stories behind them. There's something about faces that just won't let go of Australian visual artist Daniel Connell. And well, he joyously explores the world of portraiture. Presently touring India, the country he seems to seriously wonder about a past life connection with, Daniel has been showcasing his portraitures of six students in Australia who are taxi drivers by the night. As we pick this conversation with him, we figure the bond with India started very deeply with Mahatma Gandhi and the many shades of the residue get beautifully filtered between us. Welcome to the show, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me. We'll start with um, this exhibition that you are touring um, India with. Mm. You know, it's um, centered on the Sikh um, students who also are taxi drivers in Australia, mm. essentially. Uh, what are your emotions um, uh, till now, you know, about this show that you've been carrying around? Uh, look, it's been an extremely good experience to come here. Um, India, I've been coming to India for um, the last three years and I've spent a lot of time here. And uh, I always say that um, if there was a hospitality or a humanity Olympics, India would win all the gold medals. <laughs> it has the most um, amazing hospitality skills. Yeah. Um, and that is one of the things that inspired me to do this exhibition in the first place because I felt like um, Western countries, um, we've lost a lot of our hospitality skills. Uh, we're all busy running around and focused on focusing on jobs and careers and things yeah. like that. And we forget that um, uh, hospitality is uh, extremely important, especially for people who come to your country from a, from a long way away. And um, I felt bad that um, you know, there were some experiences, inhospitable experiences happening in Australia, especially to Indians, and I wanted to um, make up mm. for that in a way. Mm. I'm also fascinated by Indians, and, um, and I wanted to bring this exhibition to uh, Chandigarh and to with Punjab in particular, so that the people who see it here can be really proud of the people who are going to other countries. Yeah. And mm. what about the feedback? I mean, what kind of feedback have you been getting from the people around here? I am really, really happy. Uh, Indian people uh, are very emotional people. They express their emotions. They're very heartfelt. And that's one of the things that keeps, bring, uh, keeps on bringing me back here. Mm -hmm. um, I had some people crying in the exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> I had one lady who walked in and burst into tears when she saw it. And, um, and I think that um, that's what art is all about connecting with people. The workers from the Rose Garden, because it's situated there, so the guys who work. Yeah. Every morning I've been um, having a cup of tea and I meet the workers who also come for their cup of tea before they start work. Mm -hmm. So they came in and saw the exhibition too. And I, I, I like the opportunity to share work with everybody, especially with people who might not normally go into an art gallery. How different are their reactions, you know, people who generally mm. won't walk into an art gallery? Mm. Uh, how, how do you find their reactions to art? Look, I think that one of the reasons why I do portraits is that um, everybody can connect with a portrait. Mm. Everybody can connect with a face mm. because we read faces from the moment we're born. We can read faces before we can read anything else. Yeah. Everybody reads that like an encyclopedia. And I what? like that element, yeah. yeah. What was it about this particular theme, you know, um, Sikhs, Sikhs in Australia? Yeah. What did you find about their faces <coughs> uh, so intriguing that you... Well, that's a really good point. Okay, one, I wanted to do something for generally all the Indian students, because I'm not particularly championing one community over the other. Uh, but in Australia, the Sikhs are definitely seen as iconically Indian. Okay, so I knew that if I did Sikh faces, then um, the other Indians would relate to that too they would say, well, they're Indian, they're representing India. It would be like putting the Indian flag up, okay? okay. Because to see a Sikh face with a turban and a beard, for all the Indians, they would know that's something about my, my home and my country. Now, the Sikh faces in particular, are, I mean, you cannot deny that it's a very um, uh, unique and uh, stand, uh, outstanding look. They have turbans and beards, okay? So um, they look, uh, you know, is different and interesting. But the thing that uh, drove this whole exhibition was a meeting with Lakvir, 
who is a particularly, um, it was an accidental meeting because he's a student and he drives a taxi part-time and um, he's e extremely profoundly humble, polite, mm -hmm. uh, dignified and uh, interesting fellow and um, that was the moment when I thought oh, this, uh, these people deserve to be um, celebrated for what they bring to our country and certainly not um, ignored or uh, unacknowledged. It's, it's a great thing, yeah. Was it just the Indian face, uh, the Indianness of it that attracted you or was it also related to the, mm, you know, the racial attacks on the Sikhs? I don't believe that it's a, it's a concerted racist campaign against Indians mm -hmm. or certainly not against Sikhs. Yeah. I think there's a lot of ignorance about um, a person who looks different, so coming to Australia and being a minority with a turban and a beard um, attracts attention, okay? Now the other thing is that a lot of the Punjabis and the Sikhs end up driving taxis as their part-time job. Okay. In Australia, um, I must make it clear, in Australia all students work part-time. When I was a student I had five part-time jobs. Mm. I worked as a cleaner, I worked as a waiter in an Indian restaurant <laughs> oh, and wow. I worked um, as a gardener okay. and uh, a gardener in two places. Because everybody, everybody works yeah. um, and you're always dashing around from here to there as a student trying to earn extra money. So the international students are no different and they all get part-time jobs. A lot of the uh, Sikhs, because the taxi companies are owned by Sikhs in Australia, established yeah. the community, yeah. they end up getting jobs through friends and friends of friends. Mm. So they end up driving taxis. Now taxis is a challenging job and um, they're very brave to take it on because you have to know the place, you have to be able to communicate and also you have to be able to um, deal with people who are not always at their best on Friday nights and Saturday nights, which okay. is when they earn most of their money and people are drunk and people are crazy and you know they have to deal with crazy people so that's so it's the nature just a, of the Western so it's society. A these are cumulative reasons you know yeah. and not just uh, what it has been reported like you know racial attacks. Exactly and there's more to it than that too I mean you know people are ignorant they might say uh, you know where are you from or they might be they might be angry they might be drunk they might be stupid and so that's not that's seeing people not at their best and it, it just so happens that the Punjabi Sikhs are like at the forefront of meeting these sorts of people yeah. because they're driving taxis. The other uh, reason is that um, uh, Indian students like the other students um, tend to be working in, in um, places that finish late at night so they're working in fast food joints or petrol pumps um, and um, Petrol pumps regularly get robbed in Australia because they're open all night, 24-7. Okay. And most of these all-night petrol pumps are staffed by Indian students. Uh -huh. I don't know why, but they seem to, for friends of friends of friends of friends, word right. of mouth, because right. they're open 24-7 and they are staffed by Indian students and um, they regularly get robbed. And um, that's not because, they're not getting robbed because there's an Indian student there. Mm. They get robbed because they're open all night and yeah. because they hold cash. And, you know, there's... The other Indian students are, are um, finishing their jobs late at night. They're catching trains and buses and, they're, and they're, they're not safe places to be for anyone. Not for me. I wouldn't do it, you know. It's, but it's unfortunate. I'm not in any way justifying it. It's terrible. Um, but also the explosion of Indians in Australia in the last five years has been massive. So more people come, more likely that these things, these things are going to happen. Yes, they do have a racial element because people who attack other people are... Uh, you know, firstly, they're already bad people and um, they're going to use whatever method they can to intimidate somebody. And if that, if that means using racial slurs or racial remarks yeah. or attacking somebody who's vulnerable. An artist, you know, who, who, has an, who has a mind which is like the whole space, you know, and he doesn't believe in these, you know, yeah. these kind of things. How does an artist react to, you know, this reality that even today when the world is opening up, Still, people are seen as races and colours of skin. How do you relate with uh, all that? Look, it's always going to happen. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, uh, and r racism and any sort of thing that says my community or my club or my people or people who are like me are better than people who look like you, mm. um, that's always going to happen and it has always happened. People feel threatened by people who are different, mm. people who... people use that, people divide and rule, you know, um, we all know those sorts of things in history, people exploit that, people, 
you know. So any kind of education of or modernism hasn't really changed all that. No, I don't, and I don't think it ever does. I yeah. mean, you get bullying in schools. You get uh, it. It always does. But the thing is that a, an artist's job, no, well, anybody's job really, but an artist particularly, um, should make people or give people the opportunity to stop and think. It's about communication, and it's about harmony. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's about harmony. Sometimes art can and should be challenging. Hmm. It should be about um, perhaps to stir the pot or provoke something. Right, right. Um, and some art really is repellent and repulsive, but it's still important. Hmm. Uh, I mean, art also gets used by propagandists as well yeah. in history. So art is a powerful communication tool. But ultimately, I think art is a search for a truth. Otherwise, it's not art. It yeah. has to be searching yeah. for something new. Let's go back to the first point in your life, you know, when you felt that, okay, art is, is going to be my way of life. Do you remember anything? Oh, the first thing we did on the first day of school was the teacher gave us all a piece of paper and said, draw something, draw anything. And so I remember I drew a camel <laughs> in the <laughs> desert with a palm tree and a pyramid behind it. And, um, Which has nothing to do with Australia. No, nothing to do with Australia. Yeah, I wonder what I was thinking. It might have been... I just drew and drew and drew and drew, you know, because I like doing it and mm -hmm. I loved animals mm -hmm. and I loved places and mm -hmm. especially tigers and lions and elephants and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But then I had this crazy idea that to be an artist you had to have life experience. So instead of going to art school, which is what I should have done, I decided to study Spanish and then fell into teaching just because that was the thing that was open to me. So I teaching what? Teaching Spanish in oh, schools. Okay. And, um, and yeah, I did that for nine years and I was, uh, it was an absolute disaster because I was a hopeless teacher because I was very disorganised. One day, a year four, I used to draw a lot in the teaching mm -hmm. when I was teaching and the kids mm -hmm. used to love that. One day, one of the year four kids said, uh, Mr Connell, you should be an artist and uh, you would normally have just said, oh, yeah, okay, n no problem, but just get on with your work or something <laughs> like that. And I turned around from the blackboard and I said, you know what, you're right to him. <laughs> and, I, and it could have been really dramatic and I could have run out of the classroom and become an artist <laughs> on that spot, but I didn't. <laughs> but I thought, I said, you're right, and one day I'm going to be an artist and I'll, and I'll remember you at that point. So I've always remembered that. Yeah. And, um, and then about six months later after that, I um, took leave from my job and I sold my house mm. and I came to India oh. to be an artist. You yeah. packed up and everything and you came to India yeah. to yep. stay here for some good time. Yep. yep, because I knew that if I stayed in Australia, I would um, be distracted, I would not, um, I would be drawn back into this whole rut and of running off, yeah. earning a life. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's right, the whole rigmarole of life that takes over and and India provided me with that wonderful opportunity. It's very yeah. interesting, you know, you chose, of all the places you chose India mm. and you were just talking about, you know, the topics of your uh, art, uh, many times <coughs> most of your work uh, kind of somehow veers towards Indian faces um, and Indian themes. What, um, what, what, was, what was it about India that uh, kind of you... When I was 13, I saw the film Gandhi Hmm. which completely changed my life. Um, and uh, In what way? My older brother was 